Hi everyone. Hello. This is our second episode of Nuts and Bolts with <laughs> Markeens. Um, and we've decided to make these first three episodes about the primary colors. So the first one was on yellow. If you haven't watched it yet, find it on Mark's YouTube channel. So just um, type in Markeens Studio and uh, you should be able to see it. So in this series, we're talking about technical aspects of painting, later on drawing as well. Mm -hmm. um, so today, um, second primary color, red. Red, going all the way back to the caves. Uh, it was looked at as the most powerful, potent color. Mm. Um, blood, fire, and then later on, you have associations like passionate love, anger, violence, uh, danger, also adventure, but also then in the Renaissance, royalty. Yes. And red could only be used by certain painters and only a certain amount. So it has this really incredible history of uh, associations and how we feel about red when we see it. So what are the reds that you use, that you have in your studio, and um, why do you like using them? So like I mentioned with the yellows, I like to keep it simple. So I don't need uh, 10 different tubes of red. I tend to go with the warm and the cool reds. So the warm reds are the cadmium reds. And so I typically will work it with the, and by the way, with cad red, we'll just call it cad red, short for cadmium. You've got cad red, cad red light, cad red medium, cad red dark, that's four right there. And I sometimes will work with all four, not mm -hmm. at once, but I typically like to work with cad red light and either cad red medium or dark. Mm -hmm. So those, those are the, my warms. With the cooler reds, I tend to, for the longest time, I've worked with alizarin crimson quite a bit. In more recent times, I've taken to quinacridone crimson mm -hmm. and magenta, mm -hmm. which are varying over towards a much cooler, even towards, they're varying towards violet right. and can be used to mix violet beautifully. So can we just explain one more time the difference between the cool and the warm, mm -hmm. let's say, reds? And how, why that how, is. Yeah, how it, does that work? In a, in a sentence or two, just to keep it simple, it has to do with where that color is on the light spectrum. And just as with yellow, we talked about yellow, one end of the spectrum is moving towards yellow green. Yes. And the other one's towards yellow orange, warm and cool. Same is true of the red. So, so the the cooler towards... the cooler area is moving towards blue, moving towards actually violet, red violet, violet. Okay. And the warmer part of that spectrum of red is moving towards red, orange, or orange. Okay. You see. So towards so yellow, basically. Towards yellow or, or orange. orange. Yeah. Yellow. So if you looked at a, a spectrum just of this band of light, spectral of red, you would see a difference between temperature. Mm -hmm. uh, just as you would with yellow or with blue. In fact, I would invite the listeners, the artists, to go online and just look at color light spectrum and you'll see what we're talking about. And that really helps Okay. make that, so make that understood. What do you have ready for us for today? I feel like a cook on a TV <laughs> show. So what are, you, uh, what are you up to? What are you up to today in the kitchen, Mark? Well, I've got a lot of red going on. We're going to play with red. So here we go. This is cad red light. This is a very light red. Here it is by itself on this white paper. All right. And if I skim it like that, it gives you a, a different reveal. All right. Opaque versus a little more transparent. Uh, this is the cad red medium. And you'll see how much darker that is. All right. That's the cad red medium. If I scrape it. Not a whole lot of difference, apparently, there. And you can see the difference between those two. Mm -hmm. Next, I have the quinacridone crimson. So these are your warmer hues, uh, reds. And this is the quinacridone crimson, much darker. Now, this is a transparent, by the way. We didn't talk about this. But this is much more transparent. Look at what happens when I do that. Also, when you mix either of these crimsons, with other colors, you'll notice it has more of a transparent um, quality about it, not as opaque as the cadmium reds, you see. So that's the quinacridone crimson. I'll just put it down nice and thick so you can see how much darker that is. It's already taking you towards red violet, you see. And here we have the alizarin crimson, which is very similar. You can see it's a little bit darker 
And there it is as a transparent, you see? We thought it'd be fun to show what happens going back to yellow because we mentioned yellow last time. Which the, yellow is that? Please? This is the CAD yellow medium. It doesn't matter, I could be using CAD yellow light, I could be using CAD, but this is a CAD yellow medium. It's a nice, rich, warm yellow, alrighty. And we're gonna find out what happens when I mix these different reds with the with the CAD medium. And I'm getting a yellow orange right now because there's just a small amount of that red, obviously. If I add more of the red, I'm gonna get a nice, what's known as a secondary orange. It sits somewhere right between yellow and red. And here is that nice sort of secondary orange here. Okay. Now, if I had a CAD yellow light, I would get even a brighter orange than that, but that's the orange I'm getting with that particular CAD yellow medium. And let me take about the same amount with the CAD red deep, and let's find out what we've got. So now I'm using the CAD red deep, and I'm trying to approximate the same approximate ratio in terms of going for a second, what we would call a secondary orange. So it's I'm not trying to get a yellow orange Maria, and I'm not trying to get a red orange. I'm trying to get an orange that sits approximately halfway between the yellow and the red. And let's see what this looks like. You can see it's a little darker because of the nature of that red. I just want to change it, um, the, light. the light a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Let's see. Light is so important in terms of how we perceive color. And that's why these videos are a little misleading in a, in a way because I shouldn't say misleading, but they don't give you the full picture. Well, Be that's why because, artists can try in their own studios yeah, and so, see what they will get. All right. But that is such an important note. And here we go with the same yellow now. Now you're going to find a big difference when I add the crimsons. Here we have the quinacridone crimson in that same yellow. And I'm going to add about the same amount. So we're going for... a uh, an orange, a so-called orange, that sits between a given yellow, and in this case, a quinacridone red. So it's not a yellow orange, not a red orange. It sits halfway between, roughly. And my goodness, look at the difference of this. Let's put this it in the light. Like brown. It is going towards brown. It is a kind of a golden color. Very different from the others. Very, very different. So, the point of this, and let me go ahead and do the alyssum crimson, because this is an important exercise for a lot of painters. So here is that same amount of red with the alyssum crimson, and that's moving towards a raw sienna right now, or an, almost an ochre, but it's more like a raw sienna. And there you have it, if you can see that can color flip difference. The page, please? Yeah, this way? Yes. This is where mixing becomes so much fun and so informative for any given painter. You take something as basic and as simple as mixing four different reds into a given yellow. And then we haven't even touched on adding white, but if you add white into any of these mixtures, you get another host of really amazing colors. Always remember the color white. Do you wanna um, tell us maybe a few names of artists who used red, who loved or were um, good in using red? Yes, the Renaissance artists, many of them um, used red beautifully. And then I think about the scarlet colors of red too. I think about Velasquez, the Spanish painter. Um, and then more uh, contemporary, my goodness, um, the post-impressionists. But again, I wanna make the point that red was used sparingly. I mentioned Matisse. Um, I also mentioned uh, Anish Kapoor, who mm -hmm. works with red pigment, mm -hmm. wonderful. And uh, I have an Ellsworth Kelly, um, great colorist that worked with uh, red beautifully. And in my own paintings, if I could take a moment to point out, I typically, as I mentioned, use red just as an accent oftentimes because it is so strong and it does really grab the eye, uh, second only to yellow in terms of the light spectrum wavelength. All right, well, we can now uh, jump to your painting and take a look. Uh, notice how in this area here, I placed this red next to this muted red, but because of these darker hues around it, it feels like it has light behind it. 
This is something that's so fascinating about color, everybody. If you use color appropriately, particularly in a darker field, it actually has light quality to it. So I have it here for that reason. Actually, that was the last note that I put in this painting. Uh, it echoes again here and here and here. So I'm really kind of having fun with red, but look how down here, the red is very different. It's sort of a red leaning towards almost a brown red next to that blue. So I, I use it, but I'm always aware of what it's next to and how much I'm using. That's really what I'm talking about. And that's what's so fun to experiment with everybody. How much of a given color, in this case red, matters next to other colors? And what happens with our perception of that color? Does it quiet down? Does it get bold? Does it create light? This is the thing worth discovering and experimenting with color when you put it next to other codes. Relationships, relationships. Like we did last time, a little homework. Um, pick a few reds that you have in your studio that you love and see how they play with, um, let's do a yellow. So pick one yellow and then two or three or four reds and then start mixing those different reds with that same yellow and see what kind of oranges you're gonna get and are those oranges gonna go towards orange orange like a fruit or are they gonna go towards um, earth, earth tones. tones and siennas so that you can uh, learn the quality of the red and mm -hmm. the nature of the red. Am I gonna throw a wrench in here Maria if I mention that it's also possible to mix the reds together? Whoa. Yes. Down the road. <laughs> and there's no reason. Just as you can mix the yellows together and the blues together, people think you could do that. And the answer is, of course you could do that. So that's yet another experiment. Mixing one red into another. And then okay. see what you get. Never thought of that one. Yeah, I know. A lot of people don't. <laughs> Okay, so play with reds. Um, if you haven't watched the previous video on yellow, um, go back into this playlist called Nuts and Bolts and um, look for it. And if you haven't followed Mark's Instagram yet, so it's Mark in Studio, Facebook as well. Um, and his website is markeens.com. Subscribe to the newsletter. We're gonna be making more of these. So two uh, series, one is Nuts and Bolts and the other one is Coffee and Tea Talking Art mm -hmm. with Mark Eads. So Coming up is blue. Coming up is blue. Leave your comments or your thoughts on red. Share with us and also with other artists who are curious about what's happening in your own studio. And in the meantime, have a red banner day. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do that. Thank <laughs> you.